Light groups is an amazing feature that was added to the official Blender 3.2. It allows you to completely change the look of your rendering after it's finished. You can now save the light sources into layers and then change their colors and brightness. In this video, I'll guide you through step by step how to do this in Blender. So let's jump right into it. I'll be using one of the Blender interior scenes that's available in my store. Check out the link in the video description if you're interested. And if you want to know how to achieve this rendering quality in Blender, I've recently created the Art of Rendering Masterclass. It will teach you everything that I've learned over the past 10 years working as a Blender artist. How to achieve the photorealistic look, what is a correct composition, how to get the right feedback and self-improve, all those questions and many, many more are answered in the masterclass. But now enough with the plug and let's get back into Blender. So step one is creating a light group. And we do this by clicking this icon here. And under the passes, we have the light groups. So we can add multiple groups to our scenes and we can also rename them. So this is the group layout I would like to use in my scene and I would like to control those lamps individually. That's why I've created this many groups. So all you have to do right now is to select an object like this, go to the object properties and under the shading settings, here we can select the light group. So I'm gonna add this lamp to the first group here, this one to this group. Now I'm also going to add the kitchen cabinet to an individual group. And I also have those emissive details like the oven. So I've created a separate group for this as well. I also have the area lamps in my scene. So let's add them to the groups as well. We select the lamp and again, under the shading light groups, I'm just selecting the area category and the third Last step is adding the sky, the environment to a group. So to do this, we click this red icon here and same story under the settings light group, we select the environment. So I think um, now you can see why it's important to name those groups properly because otherwise you won't be able to uh, figure it out where you've put uh, those lamps and now it's much easier to control it. So all you have to do right now is to render your image. And after it's done here in the compositing settings, you'll be able to adjust the lights. However, before we do that, there are a few tips I would like to give you. Tip number one is enabling the denoising data. So we do this here under the passes and data and go to the denoising data. Uh, we do this because when working in the compositor, um, the image with the adjusted lights will be very noisy. So in order to denoise it to the best possible quality, we have to enable those settings here. And speaking of noise, this is tip number two. It's easier to go from the dark image to the brighter one um, instead of going from the bright one like this to the night scene. It's of course possible and I'm going to show you how to do this. But before you render your image, I suggest boosting the strength of some of the lamps at least 10 times. I mean, it doesn't have to be, of course, 10 times uh, in every single scene. It really depends on the environment. But as you can see, I've boosted the strength of those lamps 10 times and nothing really changed in the image. And that's because of the multiple important sample settings. I'm not gonna get into those right now. I've created a whole video about it, which should be linked somewhere in the screen. But now with everything set up, all we have to do is to render the image. And once it's done, we will jump into the compositor and I'm gonna show you how to combine everything together. Now, if you have never used Blender Compositor, I kind of get it, but don't worry, it's really not that hard. It works exactly the same as the material setup in Cycles. So when you go to the compositing, uh, you should see something more or less like this. So here on the left, you can see the kitchen uh, lamp details, environment, the names we've set up here in the light group, they are displayed here as well. So again, this allows us to easier navigate through the file, through the rendering, and you might be tempted to start setting up things right away, but I strongly recommend 
um, saving the rendering results right now. Because right now, if you close Blender or it crashes for any reason, the rendering result you were waiting for will be lost and you, you will have to re-render everything again. So there is actually no point in this setup if we have to re-render uh, the back image every time we quit Blender. But there is a solution to that. And a solution is using the OpenXR multi-layer file format here. So instead of saving to JPEG or PNG, select the OpenXR multi-layer file format, name the image any way you want. And this file format stores all the data that you just rendered in Blender. In fact, we will close Blender right now, launch it again, load the file so I can show you the entire compositing setup from scratch. So after relaunching Blender, let's go to the compositing and let's enable this use node settings here. Now I'm gonna press Shift A and select the image input here. I'm gonna load the image that I've saved in the previous step. And you can see it shows here, but before we continue, we have to go to the layer settings here and choose the view layer. And now you can see everything that was visible after rendering the image is now visible here again. So I can delete this node. I can connect them just for the sake of it here. But uh, the most common node we are going to use here in the compositor is the output and the viewer node, which allows us to preview whatever we plug in. So you can see now when I press control spacebar, we can go to the full screen and V and Alt V to zoom in, zoom out. So you can see after plugging in different inputs to the viewer node, we now see the different light groups rendered and saved in the file. So let's now start combining the groups. I'm going to start with the environment and the area lamps. In order to mix them together, I'm going to press Shift A, go to the color and choose the mix node. This is another most commonly used node in the compositor. So if I add those two inputs here and connect them with the viewer, you can see we get this result. However, I'm going to use a different mix method here and it's going to be the add. So now when I copy the viewer node and plug it in here, this is the raw rendering result we get from Blender. You can see that we have almost everything except of the light sources like this kitchen element here, this highlight from the lamp. So we can start adding them or we can play around with the environment itself a little bit. The easiest adjustment you can do is adding the color and the exposure node. And when I just drag and drop it on one of the links, you can see it highlights. So Let's drop it on the environment. And now when I reduce the exposure, you can see it completely eliminates this light source. And if I increase it, we get much more light. And you can also see we are getting some of the noise introduced to the scene. That's why we also have those denoising passes here from the denoiser data uh, pass. That was one of my tips to, to include because we're going to use those later to denoise the image. So let's revert it. And if you would like to unplug this node, just hold the Alt key and drag it out from the link. So as you can see, I already combined those two lamps together. So this is how they look like. And now let's add them to the environment. So all we have to do is duplicate this node again and just plug them here. And now you can see, well, actually you can't see. Let's make them more visible. I'm going to use this exposure node and drag and drop it here. Instead of using those two links, I'm going to use them combined. And now with this viewer node selected, I'm going to reduce it. So now you can see we are dimming the uh, environment and area lamps and making the those lamps from, from the lights, those light sources more visible. I'm going to copy this exposure node again and drop it here, but now I'm going to increase its value. So you can see 
now those lights become more visible and we can start playing around and readjusting the scene. But what if you would like to add some color to those lamps or light sources? Well, we duplicate this node again by pressing Shift D and we change uh, the mode here to multiply. And now with the multiply selected, uh, you have to pay attention to those little dots here. We need to uh, put our image source to the bottom uh, dot here and use the upper one as a color source. So now when I start adding, let's say I add this bluish color, you can see it influences the environment. So in the meantime, my node setup uh, became a little bit larger and that's because I've added the remaining light sources to our mix. So you can see with this exposure um, node, I'm able to control the kitchen light that we have here. If I go uh, to just minus 10, it disappears completely. So let's use the value of zero. And with this node, I'm able to control the oven light, which introduces a lot of noise, unfortunately. But yeah, this is uh, how it goes when we go from the bright scene to the darker one, because this is our input image. So still, I think it's really impressive how far you can push it just with those few notes without re-rendering and relighting the scene. Um, let's just change the light here to something warmer, maybe increase it. And one last thing I would like to show you is uh, adjusting those two lights independently. So at the very beginning, I've mixed them together. So now when I use this exposure slider here, both of those lamps become brighter. But if I would like to adjust ju this lamp only, if I remember correctly, it was the lamp 02. So let's, yeah, it's definitely this lamp. So let's use this note here and simply um, make it brighter if necessary. So the image now looks nice, but it's still full of noise as you can see. And to fix this, all we have to do is pressing Shift A, going to Filter and choosing the Denoise node. With the Denoise node added, let's move it here to the starting tree and we connect the denoising albedo with this input here, the albedo input, the denoising normal with the normal. And then we move the entire setup here and we just plug it into the final add node here and add it to the viewer. So it's going to take a few seconds to compute, but the end result, um, should look pretty, pretty good in my opinion. It might not be suitable for animation, but I think for the still image, it's pretty, pretty all right. Maybe we could reduce some of the noise here. To do this, you would need to re-render the scene and add more rendering samples. But as, at least for the preview and let's say the test, how the scene could look like, this looks pretty well. And I think, again, if we compare it with the starting result, this, this is really impressive uh, how far you can take it. Um, if you would like to continue with color correction uh, of this image, again, I've created another tutorial on that. Uh, actually, many tutorials, they are linked uh, in the screen right now. But if you would like to continue, uh, I just suggest uh, unplugging the denoise node uh, and keeping it for the final results. So now let's say we can use the color balance node, um, rework the light a little bit, maybe brighten the scene, increase the contrast. And once it's done, once we are happy with the result, then I would reconnect the denoiser here. I like using the denoise before the color correction, not after it, so don't plug it in here. Um, I just use it this way. I think it gives you the better results. Um, and for the final adjustments, remember you can always use the color correction settings here. So for the exposure, for the contrast, um, yeah, 
these work pretty well. You also have the curves here that allow you to uh, adjust the individual channels of the image. So if you don't, if you think it's too reddish, you can just switch to the reddish channel. Uh, sorry, to the red channel, not the reddish channel, and just uh, well drag it down a little bit uh, to make it look better. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel. And if you want to make better renderings, check out my Art of Rendering Masterclass. You will learn that making good renderings is not about talent, but following a step-by-step -step process that always works. And what took me years to understand, you can now learn in a few days if you're really motivated. So thanks again and see you in another one. Bye-bye.